Hi, everybody. Welcome to Business Computing Weekly. This is episode number 369, recorded September the 8th, 2012. Thank you so much for joining us and uh, watching us on YouTube. Our program is available on iTunes, Podomatic, uh, Blip TV, and other, other places as well. And we've got a, uh, I think we've got a really good topic for you today. Uh, but we do thank you for your support and uh, we always appreciate your comments, your likes, your shares of our video. And we always want to hear from uh, our community, which is you. And I do my best to uh, respond to uh, comments and questions in the, uh, in the uh, comment section of the YouTube video. So I always like to hear from you. At any rate, uh, we are sponsored by GFI Software. And just briefly mention the newest product that GFI has on the market called GFI Cloud. And GFI Cloud is designed to host, currently host, Viper Business Edition as a hosted service and also GFI Network Server Monitor now as a hosted service. And for more information, just get in touch with us at frugalbrothers.com. The link is in the description of this video, so check it out. Um, a good friend of the show, uh, Gordon Keenan, recently posted an article, uh, and I just want to, I'm not going to read the entire thing to you, but essentially, Gordon is a, a, a big fan of, of Microsoft's small business server, and you know, there's been a lot of IT professionals that has built a practice around the implementation of Microsoft's small business server versions, you know, 2003, 2008, 2011, etc., and Gordon laments uh, the demise of the small business server product, uh, essentially uh, saying, you know, look, there's really not a package to the best of his ability, and only one package that offers all the services that a small business server has. And I found this very interesting, and he, and he asked a question. Now, he says, suppose you have a small office with five computers all running the same desktop operating system. In this case, we're going to pretty much assume uh, Windows. Now, they need a server for storing their data. They need to have an office suite in place for word processing, spreadsheets, and email. He says, require, and these are the requirements, uh, the email must be on each desktop. Must be, uh, there, there has to be a facility for sharing of, uh, of uh, schedules, sharing of email accounts for certain users. Internal email as well as external email must be in place. They must have the facility for remote access to their email and documents from home and access their email from their iPhones, Blackberries, and so forth. There must be a, a way for, or a facility, as he says, for creating individual user accounts with security options to restrict access to certain folders, you know, company accounts, and so forth. And the backup of data should be available on external hard drives or offline via FTP. And Gordon challenges us in his blog article to name whether you're a, a, a Mac user, whether you're a Windows user, a Linux user, something that is comparable to Microsoft Small Business Server. Now, for some of you watching the show not that familiar with Small Business Server, let's just talk about some of the features uh, that you get uh, or did get with Small Business Server. The last version is 2011. Microsoft's not producing this product anymore. And a lot of these folks, like Gordon, are pretty upset about this. So let's just briefly talk about some of the features that you get with it. Well, you get Active Directory, which is huge, no doubt about it, with group policy and so forth. There's web hosting built into it, Exchange email, Exchange server. SharePoint is built in. There's remote access. You can run business line of applications uh, with it. It supports up to 75 users or devices. Uh, there's an integrated console. There is what's called WSUS for Windows Software Update Services. It's built on top of Windows, uh, uh, Windows Server 2008 R2. Uh, and then there is a premium version which essentially adds on uh, Microsoft SQL Server. Uh, some people say SQL. I say SQL. It doesn't really matter. We we're all saying pretty much the same thing. So these are some of the services of Small Business Server. And um, I, I think uh, Gordon brings up a very good point. When you, when you really think about an all-in-one solution, uh, there's really nothing that comes really, really close to Small Business Server. However, that being said, 
if you look at it strictly as services, um, and uh, Gordon's not a big fan of the cloud, apparently, or uh, where it takes multiple solutions to achieve everything that he can with the small business server box. I get that. But as the Dylan song says, the times, they are a-changing. Now, almost everything in his list of requirements can easily be handled by a few simple things. Number one, uh, as far as the email and the document sharing and all that, uh, we happen to use Google Apps for Business. And the reason we use uh, Google Apps for Business as opposed to the free version, which you can still get uh, up to 10 users, is because we're also uh, Outlook users as well. And Microsoft Outlook, uh, in order to sync your your tasks and your, your calendar, your uh, everything with Outlook, uh, you need small. Uh, you need Google Apps for Business that has the uh, Google Apps Sync tool. Uh, I think this kind of tricks Outlook into thinking it's connected to an Exchange server. Uh, so that's very very cool. That's one of the reasons. Then we get a lot more storage, and we're prolific uh, email organization, so we get more storage than uh, what comes with the free version of Google Apps for Business. But Gordon's requirements on here uh, for documents. You know, with with and, and also you can use Office 365 as well as a great replacement for a lot of these services. And that's how um, that's how uh, companies are now looking at it as the services that they're getting. Office 365 provides Exchange, uh, SharePoint, uh, Link, which is an instant messenger and collaboration tool as, as well. Uh, that's all included in Office 365 subscription. Where you don't have to have the Exchange server. Uh, Google Apps, the same thing. You have Google Drive for sharing documents. As far as the Office Suite is concerned, I'm going to kind of leave this one off the table. Uh, with Google uh, with Google Apps for Business or, or even the free version, uh, there is a, a word processor spreadsheet presentation program, which is probably acceptable 80% of the time for most users, unless they have very complicated needs. Uh, with uh, Microsoft, you can get what's called the, the Office Web Apps. And there's uh, uh, OneNote, PowerPoint, Word, and Excel in Office uh, Web Apps as well. Again, these would probably do 80 or 90% of which, what most Office users would need these for. Uh, but we'll leave this off the table uh, because, as you know, there's LibreOffice, OpenOffice, uh, there's Microsoft Office. There's a lot of of office suites out there and, and not you, you don't get office with small business server either okay you don't get it uh, as part of small business server let's be very clear on that as far as email of course with google uh, google apps or with office 365 you're going to uh, there's even zoho for that matter uh, you can get your email both locally uh, connects nicely on a client such as on apple uh, with the Apple Mail, iCal, etc., or they now call it Calendar. Works great with that. Uh, there's Outlook, uh, or there's Outlook. Uh, it'll work with uh, on Windows. So uh, these things play nice with mail clients uh, equally as well. If it supports IMAP, it's going to support the mail. And of course, the web interface is there uh, as well. It says they must have the ability to uh, facilitate for remote access to the email documents from home access to the email. Uh, we mentioned that. There must be the facility for creating individual user accounts with security options to restrict access to certain folders. Well, you can certainly do that with Google Drive. It's now called Google Docs, by the way, now called Google Drive. You can certainly do that. You can share folders. You can share individual files with groups or individuals. And what they can or cannot do, they can edit or they can just read. You can do that. Now, I would say an ideal solution, in, in my opinion, and, and I want to hear from you, because I think your opinion is extremely valuable. In such a scenario as this, uh, either Office 365 or Google Apps combined with a NAS, a small NAS, because um, uh, you don't want to put all of your uh, files necessarily in the cloud, for example. I don't put my company accounting files in the cloud per se. Rather, they go onto a NAS, and then they're encrypted, uh, and then at, uh, at night, they're backed up uh, onto online storage, okay? So I've got a local file, I've got one on the NAS, and then I've got one up in the cloud. 
uh, that's all encrypted, and uh, only I know the private key to get to it. So I have all those things. I can create user folders on the NAS. I can I can assign other users to those folders. I, there's a lot of security there. It's not Active Directory though. It's not, but I think for the most part in a five user scenario, small shop like that, they really don't. I have never seen anybody make really effective use of group policy and and Active Directory that much uh, in that small of a setting. And I believe that it's only a matter of time until Microsoft Office hosted authentication uh, anyway. So pretty much all the services now uh, that a small business server has are available uh, to you. At least a standard edition uh, through a combination of the cloud and, and NAS and possibly a cloud-based backup solution. What's still not really available, uh, broadly speaking, uh, you, you can get a form of a hosted SQ, SQL database, but the ability to run line of business applications, that's kind of the odd duck out there. Uh, and if that's the case, then uh, th there is a server platform, Windows Server, uh, was it 2012 Essentials, uh, uh, is certainly out there to run line of business applications on. In other words, um, I, th I think what's, for the most part, what we're seeing is uh, most of the services being migrated and hosted to the cloud. That's what we're seeing. The day is, is painfully obvious. Microsoft has discontinued the SBS product. It's time to embrace doing things a different way. Maybe a way you're a little bit uh, not as much used to, but there's for, for the downside, there's going to be opportunity. There's opportunity in migrating to the cloud. There's going to be opportunity to extending uh, above and beyond what you can do with small business server. Let me give you an example. For example, with Google Apps, there's a Google Apps Marketplace, which will allow you to integrate Google Apps with things like CRM, with uh, different accounting packages, uh, invoicing applications, uh, different uh, business intelligence applications. So you can extend that infrastructure much more easily and, and add more features relatively quickly uh, all within the, an, an ecosystem uh, that is hosted somewhere else and the customer doesn't have to worry so much about things like backup and redundancy and all that because it's taken care of for them by Google or Microsoft or other services. As, and, and as far as for the, the on-premise on storage of file print sharing you know, a NAS can do uh, that kind of stuff quite handily, quite handily, and for a fraction of the cost of a small business server. Um, so the way I look at it, I see it as opportunities to grow your practice by beginning to embrace an ecosystem and not only looking at the replacing the services offered by a small business server, but expanding on that, you know, growing be above and beyond that. I think that's what the where the opportunity lies. Um, that's my take on this, and I would definitely like to hear from you and, and hear your opinion. Uh, what would you do? What would you recommend in this scenario? Would you would you uh, would you look at uh, trying to do something with Linux? Perhaps would you look at say OS 10 Mountain Lion Server? Would that be a good solution? Should a software company, uh, or should a, 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 a like uh, the, the makers of Ubuntu, should they be looking at filling the void? Uh, is this an opportunity for them to come out with a all-in-one package that does everything? I think that's the question. That's the question Gordon poses. You know my opinion, uh, but I want to hear yours. Um, we post these videos every weekend. Uh, we didn't do one last weekend because of Labor Day, but we always appreciate your feedback. And remember, like this video. I'm Bruce Nader at Frugal Tech. Remember, if it's in your shop not making you money or saving you money, get it out of there. I'll talk to you later.